Hello friends, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In this tutorial, we're going to answer a question that was asked to me by one of my good friends and colleagues. He said, Chris, how the heck do I use the adjustment brush in Lightroom and how do I use it well? Well, in order to answer that question, I wanna provide a three-part tutorial. Part one, I'll be working with some demo files so we can really understand how the tool works, learn some shortcuts, learn some tips and techniques. Then in part two, we'll apply what we've learned to some demo files. Then in part three, we're going advanced. So if you wanna follow along with me, if you wanna work on the high res files as I'm working on them, you can download those. Just click on the link in the description below. All right, let's dive right in. All right, well, here we are inside of Lightroom Classic, and currently I'm in the develop module. I have my first demo file open, telling us we're working with the adjustment brush tool or the brush tool. Now we can select this tool by clicking on it here in the tool strip. When you click on it, you see almost like this drawer slide open of all of these settings and controls. Now, a lot of these are controls that we've seen before, exposure, contrast, sharpness, noise reduction. Then we have our brush settings. Now we're gonna see some of these similar controls with some of our other selective tools. The only thing that's different with the adjustment brush is we have some of our brush controls. So what are those? Well, for starters, let's go ahead and close this and let's go back to the document. Let's go back to our first shortcut, which is the K key. You can tap the K key to access the brush tool, do some brush work, and then tap the K key again in order to exit out of that. Now this also works even if you're in the library module. So here I'll be in the library module, and here I can see all the files we're gonna work on. I've decided I wanna work with the adjustment brush. I tap the K key and it knows that the adjustment brush is located inside of the develop module. So it goes there and activates the tool. All right, well next we have the ability to change our brush size, which is the first slider. We have size, feather, flow, auto mask, and density. We'll talk about all of these, but let's start off with size. Now brush size, we can click and drag this, the slider to make this smaller or larger. We can also use some really helpful shortcut keys. And these keys work in Photoshop with the brush tool, the clone stamp tool, et cetera. So you tap the right bracket key, the brush becomes bigger. And we can see our little brush overlay graphics there. Tap the left bracket key and it becomes smaller or just press and hold and you can make it smaller or you can make it bigger. Next, we have the ability to dial in an effect. So currently the effect that I have is increased exposure. I'll make the brush a little bit smaller. And for now, I'm gonna remove feather so we can talk about that. And I'm just gonna make a brush stroke. So here you can see I'm painting up and down. And what I essentially have done is I brought in brightness to this part of the image. Now, what's interesting about this is the edge detail. The edge is pretty, it's pretty sharp. It's pretty strong. It's pretty defined. If we want it softer, if we want a softer edge, well, we can add some feather. The next slider is our feather slider. So I can click and drag that up. And as I do that, take a look at the brush overlay graphic. So we have the concentric circles. That inner circle is saying this is the area that will be affected most prominently. Then it will softly transition to the outer edge. Outer edge. So if I go ahead and click and drag now, you can see I'm painting this really nice soft, almost like soft light in the image. And it's really helpful to have a soft edge if you are painting light, if you wanna brighten up someone's face or change the edge of an image so it's not so harsh and noticeable, right? So the softness can be really, really helpful. Now, let me just delete this. So we currently have a pin here. I'm gonna delete that. And I wanna talk about a couple of things to dig deeper. Look at my overlay graphic right now. We have the little pin in the middle. And then we have the, the inner circle, then the outer circle. Now, what you can do is you can, you can create an adjustment. When you do that, you click and paint and that pin is now gone and that pin stays wherever you started. Now that pin is the way that you can select the adjustment. You can also delete from there. So if I click and drag, you're gonna see I, I'm gonna have that pin there and then I'll create a new adjustment and click and drag. And now I have two pins, this adjustment and this adjustment. I could have different values in those adjustments and I can delete those by selecting one of the pins and hit delete key, select the other pin and hit the delete key. Now let me make the brush smaller and we will be talking about feather and our shortcuts. Just hang on for a second. If I make a brush stroke here and decide I wanna do one more, one way I can do that is by clicking on the new button and then add another brush stroke, click on the new, but that's kind of tedious to have to go to new every time. A faster, more advanced technique that I like to use is just to press the K key to exit out of the adjustment brush, press it again, and then add that. Press it once, press it twice, and then and you can see how we can continually add to this. Now when it comes to deleting, we've seen that we can click on a pin we can then change value with that pin. 
or that area that we've brushed in, or we can press the delete key to get rid of it. Now what happens if you have tons of brush strokes everywhere? Like in this case, I have four and I just wanna get rid of everything. We'll go to the bottom of the dialogue and there's a little reset button. We can click that and that just will say, you know what, anything you've done with the adjustment brush, just get rid of it. And it won't affect anything else you've done in Lightroom, just what you've done with the adjustment brush. Okay, now let's go to this feathering, the soft edge. We've seen how we can add a softness to an edge by using the feather slider, or if you hold down the shift key and use your bracket keys, let me make the brush bigger so you can see this. If I press shift plus left bracket and hold that down, that removes the softness of the edge or removes the feathering value. Shift plus the right bracket key, you can see that increases it. So you can always increase the feather value by using those shortcuts. And the ones that you wanna write down are these ones here. Um, on the screen. Next we have the flow. What is the flow? Well, let me remove the feather so we can just see how we have one big strong brush stroke right there. And that's at a flow value, which is pretty high, 84. Let me take it down to something low like 20 and just click. Notice how it's a very faint amount of the adjustment. Now currently for demo purposes, the adjustment's exposure, but it could be exposure, clarity, dehaze, a color, noise reduction. It could be anything, any combination of these sliders, but it's kind of easy to see with exposure. I can slowly build that effect up. Now you can change the amount of the flow with the slider or by pressing numbers on the keyboard. So if I go ahead and press a number on the keyboard, I can change the value. So I'm gonna press one or I'm gonna press three and that's gonna to go to 30% or five, that's gonna to go to 50 or zero, it's gonna to go to 100 or one, it goes back to 10. So here I can choose a value and I can change that value simply by tapping a number on the keyboard. Okay, well that's demo slide number one. We have more to learn because we have some more options like auto mask, what's auto mask? Well, let me go to the next slide to talk about that. And let's change our value. Let's say we wanna darken up something and we have our brush size here. And I've decided that I wanna, I wanna create a dark edge around the circle for some reason. And so I have my brush size, I have no feather really, and I have flow, I'm gonna have that up pretty high. And I'm just gonna to try to click along this and paint the, the, just the circle. But every time I do that, it sort of spills over into the outer edge. Well, I could of course try to be more careful and just get really close, but then it's just not gonna look very good. So how do we deal with a situation like this where we wanna limit where the adjustment takes place? Well, if you turn on something called auto mask, what you can then do is position your cursor over the image. And as long as the crosshair is in the middle, see that little, that little plus sign, the little crosshairs, as long as that is covering the content that's good, what Lightroom's gonna do is say, okay, crosshairs, this stuff's good. Go and find an area of contrast, an area of difference, and don't affect that area. So in this way, you can see how I'm able to paint this adjustment in so that it's just affecting the circle. Now let me undo that for a second, reset that. Let's turn auto mask off again and do the same exact brush strokes. And here you can see it's affecting everything. And then undo that with auto mask turned on. I can then control what I'm affecting. So let's say I want to darken up the circle because I decide for some reason, this is an element of a photograph that needs a little darkening effect. But then outside of the circle, I want to brighten it up, okay? create a new adjustment. How do we do that? Well, you can click on the new button or tap K once to exit out. K again, that gives you by default a brand new adjustment brush. Now I'll change the value to brightening effect. Auto mask is turned on. Auto mask a shortcut is the A key, which I've listed right here. So A toggles the visibility of that on and off. And I'm just gonna go ahead and paint. And as long as my crosshairs is not going over the circle, but it's staying outside of that, you can see how I'm able to add this brightening effect in this area. Okay, great, so far, so good. Let me reset this so we can bring everything back to normal. So we just have this little shape. The next thing that I wanna talk about is our mask overlay. Now, why, why, what is that? We've actually seen it, I haven't talked about it yet. You may have seen it show up as red or something. Let me, let me talk about that. And the way I'll do that is turn auto mask off either by clicking auto mask or the shortcut key, just tap the A key. My exposure, let's say what I wanna do is just slight brightening effect because I just kinda wanna brighten up this part of the image. A little bit of feather, so I'll press shift right bracket and then I'll tap my left bracket key to make my brush smaller and I'll bring my flow value down to like 50%. And I'm just gonna start to paint around this edge here and I'm gonna maybe take the flow down a little bit more and then I'm gonna paint over here on this side a little bit less. I'm just gonna kind of, maybe I'm burning and dodging to kind of create shape and retouching or something like that and I'm just, I'm just sort of having at it and I'm not really sure if this is looking good or not. And I'm not even really sure 
what I've affected and what I haven't affected. Well, what you've seen before is when I hover over this little pin, we'll see this overlay. Now that overlay, the mask overlay, we can turn on with a shortcut, which is O for overlay. And notice how all of a sudden it shows up in red. And let me then increase my flow here just so we can paint. And can you see as I paint, that showing me everywhere I'm painted, it's not showing me the effect. So here's my effect slider, nothing's changing there. It's just showing me the area that is affected. Tap the O key again and we'll actually see the effect. Now, why the heck would we wanna have the overlay visible? Well, sometimes let's say like this, we're making a real subtle adjustment and we can't really remember what we've affected or what we haven't or what we need to do. And you'll see this in the more advanced tutorial where this will become more valuable. With a circle, it's kind of, it, it's kind of silly, right? <laughs> Doesn't make a lot of sense. But it's helpful to see a mask without an image so you understand what it is and everything. So the mask overlay, O key. And then shift O toggles through different versions of that. So you can see it either as red, green, or as a bright tone like this white, and then back to just the effect. So that's how you can change that mask overlay, either that red, green, white, or dark. And then just tap the O key to turn that off. Okay, so far so good. We're learning about mask overlays. We're learning about shortcuts. Let's get to a little more complicated situation here. And let's talk about how we have something down here, which um, allows us to control the way that this, is, this image is affected. And for the purposes here, why don't I try really high exposure flow. I'm gonna crank up, feather, bring down a little bit, and I'm just going to paint a bright white area over this part of the image. So you can see how I'm brightening this part of my little grayscale up. And I'm gonna do something similar down here. So I just have this effect, which is happening down here. And just to experiment, let me see what happened if I make that go, I think brightening is actually better. Maybe I bring up my shadows too there and maybe my blacks. So we can see how it reaches all the way across the grayscale. Now, why the heck am I doing this? Well, I'm doing this to show how we can paint multiple areas of an image and how we can affect different tonality throughout the image. Yet sometimes what we might wanna do is limit which area is affected. And when that's the case, we can go to what's called the range mask. Now the range mask has two options, color we'll talk about in a second. Let's go to luminance. Here we have this grayscale value. And in the luminance controls down below, we have this range. Now we can use the range sliders or we can grab an eyedropper. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, you know what, I wanna affect this color here or this color over here. And can you see how when I choose that range of tones, it's not affecting the whole area of the image and these sliders are indicating that. So we can also drag these around saying, you know what, don't mess with the darker tones. I only want this to really affect the brighter tones. And so you can see how I can control that. We can also control the smoothness, like how far it's reaching into those other tones. And so in a way it can help us limit the adjustment to specific areas. So when it comes to range masking, it's all about limiting based on brightness or color. Let me show you how the color thing works. So here I have another little demo file. And in this demo file, let's make sure I have an adjustment. I have this brightening, actually rather than a brightening effect, well, no, yeah, let me do a brightening effect. I'll go ahead and I'm gonna paint through all of these different colors here like that. Now in this case, I'll go to range mask and I'm gonna choose color. Now in color, I have an eyedropper and I said, you know what, I don't really want it to affect anything but this color. Or actually I want it to affect anything but this, or I only want it to affect red. Now why the heck would you want that? Well, maybe there's a red part of an image. Maybe it's a shirt or a jacket or a purse or something, I don't know. And maybe you only want to be working on that area. So with that tool, what we can then do is we can say, okay, this is the area that we've affected. If we decided that we wanted to continue to paint on that, I could paint and as I paint over this image, actually, let me take that back. I don't wanna create a new adjustment. Let me go back to my original adjustment. As I paint over this image, you can see I can paint kind of haphazardly because it's only affecting that little color there. And we can always change this by using this range mask or if we turn it off, we can see, oh yeah, oh my gosh, it's affecting everything. Okay, let me show you this on the gradient. So I have my adjustment brush, we'll do a new one. I'm gonna click and drag across this. So it's affecting the oranges, the whites, and the blues. Now with this particular one, if I go down to the area where I have my masking, and if I try luminance masking, and I say, hey, only affect the brightness value here, well, the orange is kind of bright, and so it didn't, 
it didn't limit the area that was being affected enough, right? So sometimes you have to go to color. You have to try something different with color. When I choose this, I can say, okay, only affect the blue tone. So you can see, or no, only affect the oranges. So it's only this side over here. And we can also control how far it reaches into the other tones. So say, you know, only these oranges and a little bit of the faint ones, a little bit of the more saturated ones. And you can see as I click around and then change that amount slider, it gives me the ability to control its reach. So range masking can be an amazing way to limit or constrain the adjustment to a specific area. Now range masking works with our other selective adjustment tools like the graduated filter or the radial filter as well. Okay, let me reset this and let me just show one more thing. I'm gonna go back to our original slide. This will be the last little thing I wanna talk about here. And that is, I haven't talked yet about the density slider. All right. In this case, you can see that I have uh, an uh, effect. I have a new brush. Sorry, I can't talk. <laughs> I have a new brush. I'm bringing up my exposure. And I'm going to go ahead and click and paint across that. That's giving me um, a brush with this amount of feather, 100% flow. And let me maybe crank that up a little bit more. Now, if I decrease my flow, let's say to 50%, and if I paint back and forth, eventually, I can build it up to the same exact amount as we had before. That allows me to have this full intensity of the effect. Yet, density is almost like the control above the control. In other words, if I decrease density to 50%, it doesn't matter how many times I paint back and forth, it's not gonna allow this to go above that because it's almost like creating a ceiling saying, hey, you can't go above this. So you can control the flow and you can think of density, I like to think of it like intensity. How intense do I want this effect to be? Let's say I have a exposure of a value of four. Do I want four at 100% all full intensity? Or do I, you know, I really only want 104 exposure, just, you know, kind of faint, kind of painting it in there. Now, I saved this for last because this is actually a slider that I never use. <laughs> I find that it's easier to choose my values by dialing in the effect and leaving the density all the way up as it is, if I want less exposure or whatever the effect is, I will just paint that back in this way versus use the density slider. That's just me, but I wanted to let you know what that is and how it works. Okay, I know I said that was the last thing. There's actually one more thing, which I forgot, which is when we make effects, we can have lots of different controls which come together to create uh, look in an image. So here I'm going to go ahead and just paint this over the image. I'm just doodling a bunch of different lines and you can see how I have this little this little maze of lines here. Now this is this is set up by a certain color temp, maybe a tint in there as well, exposure value, contrast value. All these different sliders are coming together to kind of create whatever this look is. Now these sliders are all in different areas. So some of them go to the right, some of them go to the left. And sometimes what we want to do is just scale back everything, kind of like in Photoshop, you know, when you have a layer, and you're like, everything on this layer is awesome. It's just too strong. How do we decrease the opacity of it? Well, how do we do that here with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe 10 sliders or 10 adjustments? Well, there's a great, great little advanced tip. All you have to do is go to the effect area, collapse the effect to a single amount slider. Now, as I drag this down, this is like decreasing the opacity or the intensity of that overall effect. Because sometimes, let's say you're painting into brighten eyes and you realize they're just kind of too bright, it looks fake, right? Well, just drop the amount down. And what mount does is as it drops down, let's open up and look at our controls. It takes a control, wherever it was, to the right or to the left, and it brings it closer to zero. So wherever a control, control point was, relative to that, it's scaling everything kind of back at once, back towards nothing, and then also you can increase or add more there as well. So, long story short, if ever you want to control multiple sliders at once, either to increase their values or to decrease their values, all you need to do is collapse them to that single amount slider and then drag that slider so that you can dial in that effect. All right, well, hopefully you're starting to see why I needed to break this up into three parts because while the adjustment brush is simple, there's actually kind of a lot to it. And it's one of those tools that once you start using it, you're gonna use it on almost every image. And right now we kind of have a good working foundation or framework for how the adjustment brush works. So let's go ahead and apply it in a couple of kind of simple ways. And let's do that 
in the next part of this tutorial. So that's part two. And this is part two of a three-part tutorial where we look at how we can use the adjustment brush in Lightroom Classic in order to improve our photographs. Now in part one, we worked with demo files. We learned tips and techniques and shortcuts. Now we're gonna take all that we learned and begin to apply that to a few photographs, the photographs you can see here. Then in part three, we're gonna get a bit more advanced, but let's start off with some simple adjustments. So here we'll go to our first image and I'm viewing this image inside of the library module. Now, do you remember the shortcut for the adjustment brush? How we can go from really anywhere in Lightroom to the develop module, to the adjustment brush, where we tap the K key. Now, when you tap the K key, what it does is it opens up or it gives you access to the adjustment brush. And with this particular image, this guy is one of my friends, Justin, he's a hat maker. What I like about it is kind of the vibe and the feeling, but I just wanna brighten up this area. Now you can see here that it remembered the settings that I used last time. This was for one of our demo files that we were working on in the last two part of this tutorial. What I wanna do though is reset some of these sliders. Now this is a super, super important thing to know how to do. So let me show you some options. One option is to double click a slider that will reset that individual slider. Another option is to hold down the option kind of Mac Alt on Windows and it will change this to reset and it will reset all of these sliders. So let me go ahead and hold down option or Alt and click reset. Notice how they're all back to normal. And then the last option, which is one I use actually quite often, is if the sliders are all over the place, I just go to the effect pull down menu and here choose one of the effects that I wanna apply, which is exposure. It zeroes everything out except often that slider. And then here we can say, okay, a little bit of shadows, a little bit of exposure, maybe a touch of contrast, maybe a touch of warmth. And really it doesn't matter what we choose here. We're just sort of guessing. Next step, we wanna choose our brush size, feather and flow. Now for flow, because we're gonna be painting with light, I want it something below 50. So I'm just gonna tap maybe four on the keyboard. Feather, nice soft edge. I want more feather. So I can either drag the slider to the right, or do you remember the shortcut? Shift right bracket key makes the feather increase. Kind of hard to see that brush there. Then the right bracket key makes my brush bigger. Left bracket key makes it smaller. So now with this, I'm just gonna try to paint a little bit over my subject kind of multiple times. And essentially what I'm trying to do is, it's almost as if I had a reflector or maybe a light source and I'm just bringing in light. Now this, I'm sort of painting in really softly and subtly, small little amounts at a time. And sometimes when you're doing this, you may think, okay, am I affecting the right area? Is this going in the right direction? Well, in those situations, here are your options. One option is just exaggerate a slider and you can start to see where you're going. The other option is hover over the pin and that will give you the overlay, the mask overlay. And then do you remember the other way to do that? Tap the O key and then shift O if you wanna look at the mask overlay and choose the option which is the most visible, like green I think here is saying, oh yeah, this is what I'm doing. Okay, great, tap the O key, hide that and then I can keep painting. Tap my bracket key to the left, make it a little smaller, a little higher foot flow there. I'm gonna to go to six on the keyboard, tap six on the keyboard so I can go up to 60%. And what I'm looking to do is just paint in more light into this area. Now in this little example, I'm painted in pretty slowly, kind of slowly kind of building up this little look here that we have in the image and kind of creating more of a, a glowing effect. And I'm doing that just to kind of illustrate that sometimes when you're painting in light, you're just gonna go little by little. Now I'll redo this in a second a little bit faster, but here my highlights have gotten too bright. So I'm gonna bring those down add a little more contrast, maybe a little more with my shadows, and then find just the right value there for this area. Then if we wanna see the before and after, we can click on the toggle switch at the bottom. There's before, and now here's after. Okay, well, let's delete this. Let's say that we just want to kind of add one big kind of soft light source, almost like we had a huge octobank and we're just brightening this guy up. Well, just make a really big brush, right? Just crank your brush size up and you can just go ahead and have a high flow value here. And I'm just gonna click maybe once there, click once up here, click once over there. Again, just really kind of throwing in some, some big light into this image. And then once we've done that, if we decide, hey, that's too much, or we like it, but it's just, we wanna scale all the sliders back at once. Do you remember how to do that? We collapse this to the amount slider, and then we drag this back and say, you know what? Yeah, it's almost like my lights 
you know, I, I like to use Profoto lights, Profoto B10. It was just too powerful here. So I just want to power it down. And so we can find just that right value and then go back in and say, you know what? It's still a little too yellow. I want a little more saturation. And maybe I think actually that looks kind of cool. Maybe a little more clarity. Yeah, that'd be sort of fun. And you can fine tune those sliders as needed. All right. Again, to see the before and after is click on the toggle switch. There's our before and there's the after. Okay, that's one example of using the brush. Again, we're making big, broad brush strokes, but what I'm trying to do is illustrate some of the ways we can begin to apply the techniques that we've learned. Now, keep in mind, you can use these in big, bold ways or really, really fine-tuned. Maybe there's a small highlight on someone's glasses that you want to just, you want to bring the highlight down a little bit. You could paint into that little area. So it, just because I'm demoing this in a big way doesn't mean that's the way you always use it. Okay, let's move on to image number two. And I'll zoom in on this image as a, a portrait of a friend. And in this case, I noticed that it's it's a window light photograph. And I noticed that her, or let's see, her left side of her face on, for us, it's right side of the image is too bright. So I'm gonna make my brush much smaller, take some of the feather down and my flow, I'm gonna bring down as well. I'm gonna go to the effect pull down menu and just choose highlights and say, you know what? I'm gonna drop my highlights down here and I'm just gonna paint over this area. And what I'm looking to do is just to bring down the highlight that we have there. And I can paint kind of haphazardly because I'm only using one slider. And the slider that I'm using here is the highlight slider. So it's this one. And so it's just targeting those tones. Now, if I realize that's kind of nice, but I also want to drop it down a little, the exposure, and then maybe boost the shadows, and then maybe add a little more contrast and find just the right mix there, you can see how in a way I'm correcting exposure. Again, a little more of a fine-tuned example on the face there. Let me see if I can zoom in even further so you guys can see that a little bit better. And you can see the before and after. We can hover over the pen. It will show us the area that's being affected. And in this case, I'm brushing in pretty big, broad strokes because I know it's just targeting one tone. But let's say that I realize, you know, I also want, I just kind of want to darken it even more but now all this area where it's spilling over, and let me tap the O key to lock that in, this side of the face, the hair, the jacket, that's not very good. I only want it on the bright tones. I, I want to limit it to a, a brightness value. How do we do that? You remember, right? It's range mask. So I go to range mask, go to luminance, grab my eyedropper tool, I click on the brightness value. Can you see how the green overlay is now limited to those brighter tones? I'll tap the O key to hide that and I can flip on the toggle switch and you can see, yeah, it's just hitting the brighter tones, even though I'm using highlights, I'm also using that exposure slider. It's just working in those areas. Now, another way that you can kind of, you can kind of get a preview without having to have the mask overlay is you can just manually add a color or remove a color or saturate colors. Sometimes it can help you kind of see what you're doing. Actually saturating these colors looks kind of nice. So again, just a subtle little fix on this image, but you can see the before and after. Now let's say one of the things I realize is it's too strong. It's really easy to get carried away when you're improving your images, right? And I just want to take all of these sliders and I want to decrease them all in a uniform way. You obviously know how to do this, right? And this is where, believe it or not, I mean, you know more about the adjustment brush than most people already just by following that first part of the tutorial and now this one. And so here I can take that all the way back and just find just a sweet spot. Just, you know, it's almost like I wanted a little diffusion. If I had a little diffusion panel there, I didn't have one, but this is doing it for me in post-production after the fact, it's saving the image in a very selective and focused way. Okay, next, let's work on an image. This is a photograph that I captured of one of my friends, Joel Grimes. Joel is an amazing teacher, photographer, person. So I wanna improve this portrait of him and I love the light of it, I like his posture. I think this is very Joel. And let's say I wanna share this one on Instagram, so I'm gonna crop it. So I'll tap the R key to select the crop tool. And as you probably know on Instagram, you can't have an aspect ratio like this. This is too tall. So what we have to do is change it to something which is four by five or eight by 10 or less. So I'm gonna choose that option. And that's just a limit within Instagram. It forces you to do that because I think it's because a vertical image would just take up too much space when you're scrolling. So they force you to scroll, um, have the image take up less screen real estate. So anyway, that's what it is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and crop in there. 
and then double click to apply that crop. Now when I do that, I start to get familiar with how the image is gonna be experienced a little bit more up close and instantly, what I noticed at least, is that his hand here is too bright. So I want to correct that. Now you may think, okay, Chris, why not just go to the basic panel, bring the highlight slider down, and that will fix that issue, but it will fix that issue maybe, but then it also ruins all the nice light on his face there. So I don't wanna do that with one of these sliders. I'm gonna use the brush tool. So let's use what we already know. We'll tap the K key to select the adjustment brush, and then we'll go to our pull down menu, maybe choose highlights to zero everything out except for highlights. And in this case, I should also mention that we're gonna run into a problem, which will give me the chance to talk about another feature of this tool. So first, let me though try to, try to solve this. So I have my brush, I have my size, feather flows up pretty high, and I'm just gonna paint over the hand, and I'm just dropping the highlights down. I don't want people to really be drawn into the detail of the hand there as much as they were before. And so if I zoom in a little bit, let me zoom in even farther, you can see when I flip the toggle switch, yeah, that's a lot better. Now, if we tap the O key though, you can see the overlay graphic is showing me, the, or the mask overlay is showing me that, wow, this is really spilling over everywhere. I wanna limit this just to the hand. How do we do that? Well, we know we can go to range mask and we could try say luminance mask and we could select the brightness value of the hand there and it kind of limits it. But if we look closely, can you see how the green is still spilling over into the jacket? And I could say, well, what if I limit this you know, a lot, but then it's not really affecting the hand as much as it needs to be. So, so what do we do in situations like that? When you run into a problem like that, just grab the erase brush. We will use auto mask. Oh, about this brush size looks fine. Feather, slight feather flows all the way up. And I'm just gonna go ahead and paint away the adjustment from the other areas. Now, in this case, it wasn't really affecting the other areas that negatively, but sometimes this can make a big difference. And as I go through this, looks like I made one more little mistake here, which is, let me zoom in on that. Can you see on this part of the hand, it's it kind of, well, let me make a worse mistake. I erased too much of it. So if you just go back to the add brush, here I'm gonna turn auto mask on, flow, I'll crank all the way up, brush size down a little bit, and just say, hey, let me just add this into this area here, and then I can bring that back. So you can always just add or subtract in any way that you need to. Okay, overlay looks kind of strange. Let's tap the O key to get rid of that. Let's go ahead and flip the toggle switch. You can see there's our before and after. Up close, it doesn't really look like it's that big of a deal, but then when we zoom out, hopefully you start to see the whole image. You realize that the eye, as we know in photography, right? The eye goes to areas of brightness. And in this case, the hand's just too bright. And so now we have darkened that up. Okay, we have one more example to look at. Next image is a landscape photograph, so I'll go ahead and choose that image. This is an image that I captured out in Antelope Valley in California, and these hills, they are covered with California poppies. It was such a beautiful day, and I took this picture a long time ago, but I still love it, and it's still a great image for illustrating the adjustment brush. So in this case, what I wanna do is just highlight a couple more new techniques and then kind of reiterate a few things we've talked about. Now, one of them is I have a mouse where it's one of these um, one of these by Apple. And what I can do is I can actually have a, it's like I have an invisible scroll wheel on that. And as I use that, you can see that I can change my brush size. So that's another way that we can change our brush size simply by using that third button on our mouse if your mouse has that, um, that ability. Next, let's go ahead and let's create a new adjustment. And rather than highlights down, I'm gonna go shadows up. I'm gonna bring exposure way up. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit too high so I can kind of illustrate a point. Remember, we can always lower this down later. Maybe add a little bit of clarity and maybe a little bit of color temperature as well. Okay, next we have this nice big brush here and I'm gonna use my um, scroll wheel or a little invisible ability to do some scrolling to make the brush bigger or tap the right bracket or just drag the slider. Either way works. Auto mask, we tap the A key to turn that on. Flow, we're gonna leave it up pretty high. And we're just gonna look to paint across this road. What I wanna do is I wanna draw the viewer into this road because that's what's so interesting to me about this scene. I'll tap the left bracket key to make my brush smaller and I'm gonna go down to these smaller areas. Now remember I said I was gonna make the, the adjustment too strong and I wanted to do that to kind of illustrate a point. Let me just show you maybe where we might have it a little more realistically, something like this, so you can see the before and after. But it's hard to see the problem when it's that low and that subtle. So I'm exaggerating it and I'm gonna zoom in on this. And the reason why I wanna do that is, can you see how Auto Mask has done a really good job but it's made the edges kind of crunchy. 
So if ever you find that you know your edges are just a little bit too much, turn auto mask off, tap the A key, and then I'll tap a number on the keyboard, like, I don't know, maybe the four key, go to 40% flow, and I'll tap the right bracket key to make my brush bigger or use any technique you want. And I'm just gonna paint along these edges, tapping the left bracket key to make it smaller. And the reason I'm doing this is, while it's good that this is just focusing on the road, I also want to extend this a little bit past just that the actual dirt and I want to get a little bit of the edge of the road and maybe a little bit of the center of the road and a little bit of this part of the dirt right there and then I'll make my brush bigger and I'll take my flow down and I'm just gonna say I want something along the edge of the road here just kind of this this almost this light kind of traveling kind of following our road here I want to bring a little bit up onto the hillside so I'm going to go ahead and do that and just painting over those hillsides there just bringing in some light just kind of having fun with painting with light here and now that we've done all of that of course we need a more realistic value so I'll just double click my exposure slider and maybe double click shadows double click clarity double click temperature just reset it so this is this is what it is without any adjustment and then I'll incrementally bring these back in because I know it's I need to be pretty subtle I can't have this I don't know, so dramatic that it's it's overpowering. I want it to draw the viewer in, but not really take control of the entire image. So here's my before and after. And even at this point, I think for demo purposes, it looks kind of good. But for, if I were to print this, I think it would be a little, I don't know, a little bit too, too obvious maybe. So I'm gonna collapse these sliders down to an amount slider and then drag those down. And that's the beauty of that slider, right, is that, Sometimes you think, yeah, this, this is, adjustment is awesome. And it usually feels awesome because it's exciting and it's dramatic. But when you close your eyes or when you look away and then look back, that's a true test. Does everything blend together well? And in this case, I think, yeah, something around there. Let me just look at my before and after. Yeah, that's really nice. Just a subtle little improvement in that landscape. Of course, if your style is more to have, you know, bigger, bolder adjustments, well then, you know, crank it up. It's really a stylistic subjective choice. And that's the fun thing about photography and about creativity is you get to figure out what stirs your soul and what excites you. Okay, well, now that we have covered these intermediate examples, we have finished part two, and we are ready to move on to part three. Hello friends, welcome back. Welcome to part three of this three-part tutorial. Now, in this portion of the tutorial, we're gonna dig deep, we're gonna go fast, we're gonna develop a kind of an awesome workflow to achieve great results. In order to illustrate how we can really start to use the adjustment brush, we'll be working on three distinct projects. We'll start off with the photograph on the far left. So I'll tap the D key to select this one. And this is a photograph of some balloons. I captured at a friend's um, photo studio. So I'll tap the R key to choose my crop tool, unlock the aspect ratio by tapping the A key. And I'm just gonna do a little freeform crop here and crop in maybe like that, then double click to apply. Now, what I wanna do with this image is I wanna darken the background so it's pure black. Then I wanna brighten up some of the different balloons individually, how the heck do we do that? Well, first we wanna ask ourselves: is there anything wrong with the image? So I'll tap the Q key, use the healing option. And one of the things that's wrong, the handles, they are standing out. They're gonna be hard to clean up with the adjustment brush. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint over those. And then any other little thing that we think, okay, well, I can just hit really quickly with, with the spot healing tool, not the adjustment brush, I should say the spot healing tool. Now, next the adjustment brush, we tap the K key to choose the adjustment brush. From the effect pull down menu, let's choose exposure and let's crank that down as well as highlights, as well as shadows, maybe even blacks there too. Now for the brush, we want a really, really good size brush, pretty big for a project like this. We're gonna work fast and furious. Feather, I'll leave it as is. Flow, leave it all the way up. Auto mask is turned on and I'm just gonna start to click and paint over the image. Now what I wanna do in these is, as I first kind of make my way through the photograph is be really careful so that the crosshairs inside of my brush are only covering the background. So I can go ahead and click in these different areas and I'm liking that. Now, when I zoom in a little bit, I notice I think I darkened this red balloon, but I can't tell, so I tap the O key. Now the O key and then Shift O shows me different overlays. When it goes green, because the balloon's red, it shows me, hey, I have a problem here. So I'm gonna press and hold down the Option key on a Mac, Alt on Windows. Do you see how that's changing my brush to the eraser version of the tool? I'm gonna flip on auto mask. So still holding down option key, I'm gonna tap the A key or just click here. 
brush size and all that. That looks good, whatever I had last time. Flow, I'll bring this up a little bit. But again, I'm just trying to work fast. So I'm just going to crank through there. I could have also used my number keys to change that. I'm still holding the option key the whole time. That temporarily gives me access to this erase tool. Let go. Now I'm back to the regular tool. Press the spacebar key, move around the image. That looks good. Now I'm going to tap the O key to get out of the overlay. Then I want to darken up these ribbons here. So I'll tap the A key to turn off auto mask. I'll press the left bracket key to make my brush smaller. And flow, I'm going to go maybe to like 5. I tap 5 on the keyboard to, to a value of about 50. And I'm just going to slowly kind of paint over these. I just feel like they're a little bit too bright. Then I'm going to go to 2, just a real subtle value there, and kind of darken up some of these parts of the balloons. Maybe add a little shape to this balloon here a little bit, something like that, and then darken that up. Now let's zoom out. Let's see how we're doing. So, so far... So good, right? We took kind of an ordinary moment and we're turning it into this sort of interesting type of a look. Now, let's go back up here and let's say we decide, you know what, I don't like how I darken the ribbons. How do I undo that? This is my chance to reiterate the shortcut. Press the Option or the Alt key, dial in your flow, and then paint over what you feel like you might have, where you might have made a mistake. So I'm just going to paint over this a little bit and then maybe a little bit over here as well. All right, we are done. I'm going to click done. I'm going to, that gives me X or that can't talk. <laughs> I'm trying to work fast a little bit here, as you can tell, to sort of simulate how I would be working if I wasn't talking. So, all right, done. I exit out of the adjustment brush. Then I say, I really want to change the value of these balloons, especially this dark little balloon down here. So I tap the K key from my effect pull down menu. I'll choose exposure. I want to brighten that exposure, add some red, add some magenta, add some saturation maybe a little bit of shadows. And then with auto mask turned on, tap the A key, no need to go down there, just start to paint over that. Flow is too low, so I tap seven on the keyboard. It takes me up to 70%. So ideally what I want you to be able to do with the adjustment brush is to use the sliders and controls when you need to, but for the other moments, just, just go for it. Use all those shortcuts. Now in this case, how cool is this? This little balloon that was kind of lost back there we're now bringing out. And so you can see how I can control the brightness, I can control the type of color that we have in that, and mixing these colors together, or we could even change the color for that matter if we wanted to. So it's sort of a fun way to be able to do that. Now let's say we've done that to one balloon. We want to do that to another. How do we exit out of the adjustment brush quickly and create a new adjustment? Tap K once, tap it again. Okay, good. Now we have the same settings as before. Well, why don't I just try those same settings? and paint over a balloon. Now with this balloon, you can see how I'm brightening it up, definitely. I can't totally tell if my mask is any good, so I tap the O key. The O key gives me this overlay. In this case, the green is better than, say, a red or white or black, so that's helpful. That's good. Tap the O key again, and then I can drag my sliders, and I can experiment with how I want that one to look. Tap K again, press it again. Let's say I want to do the blue balloon. But rather than all this craziness that I've done before, let's just go back to, say, exposure, maybe saturation. And I'll start to paint over that. And what we'll start to see is I'm just bringing in a little bit more of that, a little bit of a brightening effect, maybe a little bit of contrast, a little bit of color saturation there too. Let's do that with the purple balloon, even on the same adjustment. Because I'm not really changing color, I'm just drawing out the color that's there. And so I'm making each little adjustment based on kind of how I want this to look. And so again, the point of this one is just how we can get really specific to certain areas and we can target colors, we can draw things out, we can make changes. If we decide little red balloon back there is too, I don't know, just too obvious, tap the H key to show your pins, click on that pin, collapse it to the amount slider and then drop it down and until it kind of has a little more of a subtle look to it. So in this case, I think that's kind of dropping that down, and I'll go in here, and I'm just going to drop my exposure down too. Okay, that is project number one, almost complete. Last thing I want to do is just sneak in a little extra advanced tip, which is if you right-click on an image, it gives you a menu. If you right-click in Lightroom anywhere, like down here in the film strip, if you right-click over here where you have your... Um, your panels, you get certain controls. So I'm going to right click on those, right click on the background. Basically, 
Lightroom loves it when you right click, or if you don't have a three button mouse, control click. But if we right click on the image and go to transform, we can flip vertically. And what that will do is it will flip this whole picture upside down. So now it just has a completely different feel. Or we can right click or control click and choose to flip, um, excuse me, horizontally, which will kind of flip it like this. And of course we can always undo that. This is non-destructive, this is Lightroom, but I just wanted to sneak that in there. Okay, next project. This is kind of a cool one. For this project, I'm gonna open these two images up in this compare view and I'm gonna zoom in on them. And what we have here is the original image and the image in its final state, which we're going to accomplish. But I wanted to do this to kind of point you in the direction of where we're going. This is about skin smoothing. It's also about working on skin on the face, skin on a couple other areas, and then working on the background. You can see the background's a little different there. Okay, and that is the roadmap. So let's go ahead and go to the develop module here. And in the develop module, we'll grab our brush. Now, how do we smooth skin? How do we do this quickly with really awesome results? Watch this. We go to the effect pull down menu, clarity. Clarity is going negative, texture is going negative, sharpness is going negative. And then, you know, I might bring highlights down a little bit, shadows up a little bit as well. That kind of evens out the brightness and, and darkness and maybe a touch of exposure increased. Then next, I have my brush. I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to turn off auto mask. And I'm gonna bring my flow up pretty high and make my brush even bigger. And I'm gonna make my brush pretty big to kind of illustrate a point. I am painting over the face and the skin and, and a little bit of the neck. We'll do the, the shoulder separately and I'll tell you why in a second, but let's zoom in. When I zoom in here, we can see if we click on our before and after, it's kind of awesome except that it's affecting too much. It's affecting everywhere, the eyes, the eyebrows, the lips. How do we fix that? Go to range mask. Here we'll go to color. I'll sample a color of skin tone and boom. Okay, that's a lot better. So now we can see this is just primarily affecting those areas. Now that that is looking a ton better, right? Because that's helping me out here. And then next step, I'm going to erase with my eraser tool, auto mask turned off. And I'm just gonna say, well, I see a little green on the lips and green means this is affecting this and the effect we have here is a softening effect. I don't want soft lips. I do not want soft eyebrows. I'm just painting this away and I do not want this part to be very soft here. Eyes will leave the same. I think that's actually pretty good right there. Now tap the O key in order to turn that back off or the overlay off. And the other thing I should say too, is that if we're here and you realize your edges aren't perfect, try your amount slider. So watch as I drag this down to the left and then up to the right and how it's kind of reaching further into certain areas. So sometimes that can help you out as well. Or you can always grab your brush and here we could grab a brush with a low flow. Like if we realize, hey, it's not really, you know, picking up this much of the skin here for some reason, because it wasn't quite the same color but this is the area that needs it the most, which it, it really does. You can just paint over that. Okay, now let's zoom out. Let's tap the O key and let's hit done. And we have, I mean, it's it looks really good. I don't know if you can see on your screen, but on mine, it's awesome. Next step is I wanna work on this area down here and we'll do it in a similar way. So we'll select the adjustment brush again. This time I wanna darken it a little more. So I'm gonna bring my highlights down, bring contrast down, bring exposure down just a touch. And same thing as before, we'll work with a pretty high flow value. And just to kind of illustrate how we can work pretty quickly here, we can go through all this area and then tap the O key. And if it's spilling over into some other areas too much, we can choose one of our range mask options. We could go to luminance range mask and say, hey, you know what? We want to have something where it's more of the brighter tone. So that includes the dress, the skin, but it's not affecting the hair and that will work really well. Click done. And if we, if I go back to my adjustment brush here, I can, we can see our before and after and see how it's really affecting the look in the image. Now with this, if this area is a little bit too dark, which it looks like it is, we can always modify, right? So again, with the overlay turned off, you can see a little better, but there's before and after. Okay. Awesome. So right now we've done two adjustments which are specific. Now, after having done that, I realize I want more brightness in this part of the face. So I click new, go to my effect pull down menu, go to exposure, 
bring up shadows, a little bit of exposure, big, huge brush, lots of feather, low flow value. I'm just going to kind of paint in a little bit of brightness in the face, maybe a little bit on the neck here. I'm just kind of drawing the viewer into this portion of the image, drop those highlights down, touch. And this one is just sort of redirecting light. And so again, we can get really specific. We can smooth skin, we can darken, we can do all these different things, but we can also direct the light. Now, speaking of that, this one, for some reason, it feels a little bit too dark for me. So I'm just going to change that a little bit. Okay, great. Last thing I said I wanted to do in this one was the background. How can we do that? Well, we'll create a new adjustment. Go to Effect, Temperature, and I'll drop this to blue and bring up Clarity and make my brush smaller. And I'm just going to start to paint over the background. And with Auto Mask turned on, I can get pretty close to the edge of the hair. And that will allow me to make sure my edges are good. And basically what I'm looking to do is add a little bit more. Well, Clarity adds a little more of that mid-tone contrast snap in the background. And then also, excuse me, also um, just add a little of that color back there as well. So just kind of having some fun with, with changing the look of the background and just making sure I'm getting all of that. But you can see now here's our before, here's our after zoom in. And then here's before and after. Now, this should just be a tutorial by itself, right? But it wouldn't make sense. It would be too fast. It would be too confusing unless we went through parts one and part two and you really understood this so that now you can do this kind of work on your own images. Okay, let's end with one more project. This one's a fun one. There was this beautiful hot air balloon. I stuck my camera <laughs> inside of it through this little vent captured this picture. And with this photograph, what I want to do is just illustrate how we can make images come to life in fun ways, just fun, creative ways. So here I am in basic. I'm doing the walk through these controls, which means exposures up, contrast is up, maybe a little bit of clarity, maybe a little bit of vibrance. Okay, great. You know, a lot of times we do that and we think, this is awesome. I mean, look at, look at what we've done, right? We went from here to here. That is, that is great we can always do more. So I grab the adjustment brush. I'll leave this where it is. Temperature is at a cooler tone. Clarity is up. Tap the A key to choose auto mask. I'm just going to start to paint over these areas here, this part of the hot air balloon, because I want this part to have more blue to it. So I'm going to bring up my feather even higher here and just paint over that. And as I start to do that, you're going to start to see, yeah, that's crazy. I mean, we're like making this crazy interesting blue tone really come to life here look at before and then after and maybe i want to do that a little bit up here too in this part where it's kind of gray i want to add a little more blue there and then with a little lower flow value i'm going to do this around the edges over here too so again i'm just kind of having fun with creating something that's beautiful i mean it's not this isn't retouching this isn't this is just sort of almost playing in Lightroom and experimenting with using a tool to focus on little areas of a photograph. Next step, we'll click new or press K and then press it again. And then here I'll go to highlights and drop those down, drop my exposure down. And I'm going to paint over this part because that seems too bright to me. Just kind of distractingly bright. So I'm just going to paint over that. And because we're using auto mask, we can do all of this pretty darn quickly, right? It's not taking a ton of effort. Tap the K key, tap it again. And here I'll go to my pull down menu and I'll choose exposure and I'm going to brighten this. And then I'm just going to paint over the reds that I have down here. And I'm going to paint quicker because you're getting, the, you're getting the vibe. You're like, Chris, I get this. I get what you're doing. You're making a selection of a specific area, you know, making it kind of bright here. Then I can change or modify the way that specific area looks. I can add a little bit of visual snap, a little visual interest into that area. And in an image like this, where we have this kind of leading line, look at the red, watch as I flip this, watch how different that red is and the blues in the background, right? And we could do that with the orange, we could do that with the yellow, we could do that with the green. Now the trick of course, is you make one adjustment, you tap the cake, you tap it again, and then you start painting. You use similar settings, and then after you've made sure you have a pretty decent selected area, go back to the controls, find the settings that really work for that particular area, which in this case, maybe it's a little bit more like that, a little brightening that yellow, and then move on to the other area. 
Now, there's more that we could do with this image, but I think right there kind of illustrates the point that the adjustment brush in these advanced projects can be something we use just for fun, for color, for brightness, for sharpness, for smoothing skin, and so much more. Well, hey, you guys, thank you so much for joining me in this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed this. And even more, I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll look forward to seeing you guys in another tutorial. Bye for now. Adios. Yoo-hoo.